Hello and welcome. This is Straight Talk from the Word of God, the Holy Bible. Our program today is called Getting to Know Jesus. I am Lynn Brennan and my special guest is Glenn Koppel, Minister of the Word from Torrance, California. Welcome, Glenn. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Glenn, tell us your story. How did you come to know the Lord? Well, I would say I was uh, very blessed. I was born and raised going to church, so I've gotten to know Jesus all my life. Mm -hmm. uh, my earliest childhood memory was going to church and there was a pickup truck parked in the church parking lot every Sunday with my initials on the tailgate, GMC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, when I was uh, six, no, 11 years old, we moved to another town and the church was a little smaller and my brother and I and some other kids would oftentimes sit on the back road drawing pictures in the bulletin. Uh, it's interesting because one Sunday I realized that I'd never accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And at that church we'd have an invitation hymn at the end of each sermon. So when the invitation time came up, I got out, wa uh, walked down to the front. I wobbled is almost the word because uh, I was really nervous. <laughs> but I walked down and made a profession of Christ and was baptized into Christ the following week. And then after that, as a young man? Well, in, uh, it was interesting because in high school, our Sunday school teacher was the minister. Wow. And he challenged us to take at least one year of Bible college. Mm -hmm. And he suggested that we should do that before we pursue our uh, career college. Because if we pursued our career college first, we'd say, oh, I got to go get a job and we'd never go back to Bible college. And I thought that made sense. Mm -hmm. So out of high school, I enrolled at the uh, nearest Bible college, uh, about 35 miles away, and took a year. Actually, ended up being a year and a half that I took there before I went off to pursue what I thought I wanted to do at that time. Well, and then at about that point, you were called upon to give your, remember your first sermon? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the Sunday that I left for Bible college just graduated from high school, been out in Illinois working at a gas station all summer, came back home, and the senior minister wanted a vac week's vacation. So he asked me if I would preach for him that Sunday. So I uh, went home and I thought, oh, I can do this. I took a speech writing class in high school. And so I wrote down a few notes there on about three or four pieces of paper. Went down to the church Saturday night and tried to go over it a little bit. And I thought, well, I think I can make this last for 20 minutes. Got up Sunday morning. I was so excited. I preached it twice in 10 minutes. <laughs> well, let's talk about the preacher. What, um, what does a preacher need to do to preach? Well, you know, Lynn, I've seen ministers who've gone to Bible college, and that's what we usually think, Bible college and or seminary. But I've also known ministers that never went to Bible college and have had very successful ministries. And uh, at the same time, there are some ministers who have gone to Bible college who really needed to be in a different career. Um, I think the real key element is your relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. How much do you love Jesus? <clears throat> and how much do you want to share that message of love with the world so that they can come to love him too? Well, and that's a good point, and I would venture to say <clears throat> there are, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of preachers in the pulpit who don't really know Jesus. You know, sometimes it's, it's so easy with any career <clears throat> to get so caught up in doing the job right. that we kind of forget about why we're doing the job. Right. And there are some ministers that struggle with that. Uh, I would grateful to say not all of them do. But sometimes we do get caught up in, well, I've got to write a sermon for this Sunday. Oh, I'll preach on this. And I write it and I preach it and go home. And we don't always think about that uh, internal spiritual preparation. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's a challenge to stay tuned with Christ. And why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. Because I love Jesus. I love his people. And I want them to know how much he loves them and, and encourage them to love him too. Amen. And this is really the purpose of our study today. Uh, we want to be people who, and we want you out there to be people who truly know the Lord Jesus as Lord and Savior. And then, Glenn, then what is the difference between knowing who Jesus is and really knowing Jesus? Well, a lot of people know about Jesus. Uh, oh, he's uh, 
uh, the Son of God who came to the earth and died on the cross for our sins. But how many of how many even people who have been Christians for a long time have spent time? I want to get to know who this Jesus is, what he taught, what he did, and what it means to my life today. And you know, in the book of James, there's a verse even that says the devils also believe and they shudder. They yeah. know who Jesus is. So it's not enough to know who Jesus is. Right. You want to know him and a, you want to know about his life. You want to understand what he taught and did as a role model and maybe as a little guide and inspiration. This is how much God loves me. And you that want his him, son came and did this for me. And you want him in your heart living with you. Yes, definitely. Amen. Well, and our walk with the Lord, once we really do know him, our walk with the Lord is getting to know Jesus. And that is the title study of the series that you have written with your New Hope Gospel Ministry. Tell us about this series, Glenn. Well, getting to know Jesus is a complete Bible study of every event in the life and teachings of Jesus. We go through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We put them side by side on the page so you can see how they relate to each other in every event in Jesus' life. We start at the Annunciation and we go all the way through to the Ascension. We see every event in Jesus, what happened there, and we make application to our lives today so we see how we can become more like Him. And this is volume one of? This is volume one of 12 volumes. There's actually 160 lessons on the life of Christ. So it's, it's not the crockpot solution. It's not the microwave solution. It's the life-changing solution. And you said uh, once, you know, it, it seems that that's long and a lot of may take three years to cover it. But you know, John, the book of John, at the very last verse in the book of John, John 21, 25, what did he say? He said, there are also a great many other things which Jesus did, which, if written one by one, not even this world, I believe, could contain the books that would be written. Well, I just look at what I've done in writing to get into New Jesus lessons, and I've thought, I could preach on just the life of Christ, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, for the rest of my life, and right. never run out of material without touching the Old Testament or the rest of the New Testament. That's right. So there is so much more, even in what's revealed to us. That's right. And how much more was not recorded, like you said, like John yes. said. What a time. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, these are the synoptic gospels, which means... Well, Matthew, Mark, and Luke are the synoptic gospels because they are similar. Synoptic okay. means similar. John is a little unique because he only wrote about three weeks in Jesus' life, but he covers every event in every day for each of those three weeks. Hmm. But he doesn't follow the, quite the same style and pattern as Matthew, Mark, and Luke do. Okay. And when were these books actually written? Most of them were written, well, Matthew, Mark, and Luke were written approximately 30 to, uh, no, six, yeah, 32 uh, 35, 40 years after Jesus was crucified. Okay. And then John wrote about 90 years, uh, well, it would be 60 years after Jesus was crucified. So hmm. uh, he was the last one written uh, about 80, 90. So he didn't write the book of John until later? He didn't write it till later. Wow. 